Okay, for working with my triptych painting this week, I need three sheets of five by five paper, and I need to put my name on all three of those along with my class code. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna use some of our shapes, and you can either use templates or you can freehand these, but we wanna sort of mix and match them. We're not looking to make anything one particular picture or image. We're just using some of our geometric and then you can put in a few organic shapes in there that we're gonna paint while we work on this project. I did some overlapping to get lots of different kinds of shapes and sections that I'm going to color in using our three different color theory patterns. Now you start with the primary color, so you're going to need to mix your own colors in here, which means you'll probably need the palette knife to move some over. You can just dry it off with a dry towel, and then you can add more of the color you need. And every once in a while, with a dry brush, you can mix those to test them and see if it's the right color or if you need more or less of another color. So that one has a lot of red in it. I probably didn't need that much, so I have to add a lot more yellow to it because I'm trying to get what color? Yeah, I'm trying to get an orange color in there. Let's see if I test it now. There we go, more of an orange color that I can use when we start painting here in a little bit. And of course, I wanna mix some of my yellow and blue together. And this time I'm going to be careful not to do quite so much blue, like I did a little too much red last time, because those are very strong colors compared to yellow. Let's see if we can get a green. There is a nice green, and you can do this on newspaper, it doesn't have to be in a palette. And then we need a purple, which is going to be some red. And blue is a stronger color than red in this case, so we're just going to add a little bit there to it. Dry off my brush, try and see if we can get a purple color. Mix it really well. If I add just a touch of white to it, we'll be able to see it purple up a little bit. If not, we can always add a touch more blue in there until I get it about the shade of purple that I want. So if I want to work in monochromatic, that means I need to start with the darkest value of my color. So if I want to do purple, I would paint the straight purple in one section. While I'm painting, I'm going to start adding white to it to give it a tint to make it a little bit lighter. You can add black to it to make it a shade to make it a little bit darker. And we'll do that in a little bit. But you don't want it to be so overpowering that it takes up everything. And you don't want any two same shades or tints to touch in this project. So I would have to stop when I get to a line and then I'm going to add a little bit of white to it. So it's gonna make it just a little bit lighter and then I can paint next to it, but you can see a difference. This one is a lot lighter than the last one. So you're gonna continue to add white or to add some black to create different shades with black or different tints with the white until you fill in the entire paper with various tints and shades. As I run into new spaces, I can go back and use some of my older, lighter colors too. So now you've finished a monochromatic painting by just using one hue or color and adding black to make the shades and by adding white to make the tints. Go ahead and move that and to the next dyna. one we're going to look at are analogous colors. Now analogous colors when you look at a color wheel are any three colors, one, two, three, right next to each other. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So you need to pick any three next to each other that you like and then we're only going to paint with those three. We're not going to add tints and shades to these. We're just going to use those three colors as much as possible until we run out of non-touching spaces. Then you can begin adding tint, white, or shade with the black to those. I think I'm going to pick yellow, yellow, green, and green. Since I only have yellow and green, I'll still have to mix one that's in between 
or I'll have to use this one as my yellow green and add a little bit more blue to make a darker green. So let's take a look at what that would be like. Dry my brush off. And if I wanted to ensure I had a darker green, I could go like this. Add a little bit of that white so you can see it. Now I have a darker green color. Or I could do a green, teal, and blue. Because those would be also a blue, a blue green, and a green next to each other. And then same as before, I'm going to fill in all those spaces, but no two same colors or tints and shades touching. Notice for this last one I had to make it a tint. I had to add a little white to make sure none of the colors were the same. So now I'll take my analogous sheet and put that now on for the, the dry. last one we want to use triad colors, which means they have to have three in between. So if I picked red, I'd have to count one, two, three, and then the fourth one would be yellow. One, two, three, and then that would be blue. So I would use red, blue, and yellow. I could also pick a red violet and then count one, two, three. And then I have a blue green, one, two, three, and then a yellow orange. So if you want to use those colors, you can, but it's up to you to pick which triad colors you want to use. I've already used two cool colors. I think I'm going to go for warm colors. I'm going to start with an orange yellow. So to get an orange yellow, I take some of my orange, and then I would take some of my yellow and mix it together to get more of a lighter orange yellow color. So it's a color that you would find in between those two on the color wheel. I'm going to paint with that first. So I picked a yellow orange, which means now I need to look one, two, three for a blue green. I'm going to mix some blue and some green together for that one. Now, my blue green looks a little too green for me, so I'm going to go back and add a little bit more blue to that top layer to blue green it a little bit more. So I had blue green, now I have to go one, two, three, four over for red violet, which is going to be purple with some red in it. So this is also a time where if I decide I would like more of that red purple color in there I could paint over one of my other sections as long as it's not directly touching right or I could even add in a little something extra like this and then once it's dry I'll have to go back in with that black sharpie of course and trace back around the edges to make it part of the artwork now this one is going to go over on the drying rack as your triad. So after your paintings are dry, we're gonna go back over those lines again with our black Sharpie. You don't wanna push really hard because if you push hard, it doesn't like to work with the paint. So instead, you're just gonna keep going over the same spot in really short lines and pushing kind of at a medium strength when you're doing this so that those lines really show up. You'll notice if I just try and draw a line it looks really fuzzy on there. If you don't want it fuzzy, you'll have to gently go back over it and you might have to turn your marker once in a while a little bit to make it thicker. The other option that you have is you can find an oil pastel that would be the darkest color you used. So for example, the darkest one I used in here was a blue. So I could find a blue oil pastel and I could go through and I could retrace those lines with the edge of my oil pastel. But if you do this, you will be really careful while you're tracing to not lose your shapes and your different little lines that you had in there before. I'm gonna go right over top of them like that. You can see that my papers are a little wrinkly, so this is gonna be extra interesting when I'm gluing these on. I don't wanna get the glue too thick, but I don't wanna get it too thin. And then I'm going to have to push down, and I might have to set some books on top of this while it dries for a few minutes before I move it to the drying rack. So the first thing I wanna do is flip it over on the back, and you should take either a white pencil or a regular pencil, and you can write your name. If you push hard with a regular pencil, you should still be able to see it. And your class code on there so that we know who it goes back to. And you can arrange these however you would like. 
I think I'm going to put my two cooler color ones on the outside. I'm going to put my warm on the inside. And then you'll have to decide which way you want to turn each of those pieces. How did you draw them? What was your original idea? And how should they go on there? After that, we're going to get a bottle of glue and work on glue. When we glue, we just want to do a little edge. Make sure it's open all the way. And we want to squeeze enough that it has some room to smush but not so much it's gonna smoosh outside. I do not need to put any in the middle because now that I have it all the way around the edge, it's gonna stick. Putting more in the middle would just be wasting our glue. So I don't wanna do that when I'm putting these on here. I've already spaced them out, so when I stick them down, I know where they're gonna go. I'm trying to get an equal space here and an equal space here on the sides. If a little glue squeezes out, that's okay. Just wipe it off. You remember how I said you might need some books while you're working on this? Go ahead and grab some ahead of time so you can start sitting them down. Now I'm gonna watch the clock for five minutes and when five minutes is up, I'll lift these books up and we'll see how this looks before moving it to the drying rack and putting it on our Sonia.